I just realized. Halls are just grown up show and tell. <laughs> Hello, I'm Caitlin and welcome to My Tech Wardrobe. If you came here because the YouTube algorithm saw tech in my channel title and you thought you were going to get tech videos, I mean, sorry, you won't, but stick around because we might have some fun things going on. Hauls. Everybody wants a clothing haul. I asked my followers on Instagram, what kind of content do you want to see for my YouTube channel? And everyone said, any kind of haul. <laughs> so I think people really enjoy seeing other people's stuff and understanding why they purchased what they purchased. I grew up watching clothing hauls on YouTube all the time. I would see influencers sort of go to their favorite store and purchase literally hundreds of dollars of merchandise. I have tried to make a move away from that type of consumption of fashion recently. What I want to do today is sort of an anti-haul but it's still a haul. I'm not the kind of person who will purchase like six things at one time from one store. I sort of choose things that I like based on color, cut, how I'm feeling that day, how I think I'm gonna integrate it into my wardrobe. I decided, well, why don't I do a haul on everything vintage or secondhand that I've purchased in the last like, I don't know, maybe year and a half or so. I'm basically just gonna walk you through things that I've purchased within that time frame that are vintage, secondhand, why I bought them, where I bought them, and how I styled them. Okay, so first up is these white Levi button-up denim shorts. Now, I purchased these from the clothing exchange online because I don't know about you, but I just hate denim shorts. I hate them. I hate them. And you know why? When you stand up in ill-fitting denim shorts, you gotta do the little, like, Scoochy scooch, you know? Not good, not good. So I ordered these in a size two sizes larger than I would typically wear just to avoid that kind of problem. And you know what? These have been awesome. I've styled them in a couple of ways with blousy tops that are really colorful and just a pair of like sandals or slides. And I've really enjoyed these. This is my very first pair of Levi shorts and I think I am a convert. Next up is another pair of shorts. Now my mom purchased a three-piece set from Auburn Vintage Clothing and it had sort of like a 60s top with a pencil skirt and these shorts. Um, fortunately for me, <laughs> these shorts fit me so my mom was very kind and allowed me to keep them. And these are really neat because they're just like a vintage pair of Reitman's shorts. I don't know if you can see that, but they're really cool. They do stretch out and I wanted these because they're a nice neutral that I could pair a lot of sort of tank tops with in the summertime. And I think it, uh, with the right jewelry and the right shoes, kind of like this, it makes for a really interesting vintage look. Next up from Le Prix, which is another vintage and secondhand clothing store, is this very flowy jumpsuit. I have not styled this for Instagram yet, um, but I'm very excited to do so. The only uh, issue with it that I have found is that um, I've been doing a lot of sitting during uh, this time of social distancing, so the booty, the booty, hmm. This booty is bigger than I thought it would be, and so it's a little tight. I bought this because I think it'd be great for summer and maybe transition into fall. You can pair it with a really light jacket going into September, um, but I figured this would be great to wear with even some wedges or some sandals. This jumpsuit is also really great for doing the thing where you pretend like you're wearing a dress and then it's pants. Short overalls. I have wanted a pair of these for a long time, but these are vintage Calvin Klein. So I would imagine they're probably early 2000s, 90s. And these fit really well. I've paired them with striped shirts. And sometimes I even just wear a little bralette underneath. And let me tell you, for the summer when it's really stinking hot. These are great. This has been probably, I would say, my most worn piece all summer. 
This is a 1950s, probably homemade play suit. And it's got one pocket. It's pretty cool. I wore it in my Archie video that hopefully you've already seen. And I just love it. I wear it in the summer all the time. I wanted to pair this either on its own or with a belt. So I've put a belt and a leather jacket on it before. I've worn it with sandals. I've worn it with platforms. It's a very versatile piece, even though it is very colorful. Next up is the shirts. First up, this knitted gray tank. Now, you might be thinking, Caitlin, a knitted gray tank for the summer, won't that be too hot? Yes, it's kind of too hot. <laughs> but on a nice breezy day, it uh, looks really great with a pair of bright colored trousers or um, even a pair of jeans are really nice too. I figured this would be a really great transitional piece as well into the fall and the winter because this becomes a sweater vest in the colder months. And I'm very excited to see how I can style that because, you know, um, grandpa chic is sort of my favorite wintertime look. Next, this. So I call this my Lizzie McGuire blouse and I'll explain why. So I got this for $5 at a vintage clothing market at some point last year. Everything's a blur now, time is an illusion. I wanted to wear it to work. So I would pair this with a pair of jeans or uh, a nice pair of trousers. And it's nice and flowy and it's got these really dramatic shoulders. It doesn't look like it on camera, but as you can see, when I style it, you can really see the poof. I call this my Lizzie McGuire top because I did a challenge back in the winter about nostalgic TV characters. And for an entire week on my Instagram, I was trying to create classic looks from all of our favorite nostalgic TV characters. Now, this one was very reminiscent of the blouse from the Lizzie McGuire movie that Lizzie wears when I think she's at the Trevi Fountain. Yeah, she's at the Trevi Fountain, I think, and she kind of like tosses her coin and she meets eye to eye with Paolo. And then I think that woman gives her cheese when they're in the gelato line. Anybody looking for a Paolo, just get a shirt just like this and also go to Italy when, you know, we can all move again. Next, this very funky 80s or 90s uh, button up collared shirt from Studio Campina in Allura. Now this I thought would be really interesting because when I purchase shirts, I'm really looking for multiple ways to wear them. So when I think about buying a shirt, I have to be able to wear it three or four different ways in my wardrobe or else I'm really just not gonna buy it. So this provided a lot of inspiration because it's got so many colors in it that I could pull from. And I've styled this quite a few ways now. A Hawaiian shirt. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not even sure this is a Hawaiian shirt because all of these place names that you see on here actually um, look like they have nothing to do with Hawaii. <laughs> I think it's more of the um, sort of Caribbean side of the world, but it looks like a Hawaiian shirt and it has a similar tropical uh, feeling to it and it's got a lot of colors. So this one is from White Tiger Vintage and I saw this on the men's side of the store and I just thought, you know what, this is great for summertime. And at the time I even styled it for work too with a pair of colorful trousers. And I think something like this is really nice for the summertime because you can just wear it any which way. I've worn it with pants, I've worn it with shorts, I've worn it with sunglasses. It's just an all around winner. It is a summer shirt, but oh boy, what a summer shirt. Next, this silky beauty from La Osa in Stratford. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got these very minimal polka dots on it, which I just love. It's got a ruched collar and I saw it in the store and initially my thought was, whoa, hello neck plunge. This might be a little too much, but when you try it on, and I'll show you a picture here, it's actually very, um, closed. It's just very drapey and I didn't even need to pin it or anything. So this was a great basic and will I think be really nice for the fall. So I purchased this just this summer and it's been a little bit too warm to wear it, but I cannot wait to style it with a pair of jeans and heels or 
uh, one of my suits. I think it'll just look really, really cool. I bought this shirt because I thought it was red. If you know me, you know that I'm, I'm just really not a fan of pink. I just, I don't enjoy wearing pink. Ever since I was little, uh, people would say, oh, you're a girl, you must love pink. And they would buy me sort of pink clothing or pink, I don't know, doll things. And, and I just, I just rebelled against that because why should I like pink just because I'm a girl? So uh, for my whole life, I've sort of been against pink, but this shirt turned up and it was actually quite magenta. <laughs> and you know what? I liked it and I plan, and I've only styled this once with my white Levi shorts, but I think that I will keep trying to find ways to wear this uh, with other colorful items that I have, but I have a feeling for fall, this will sort of lean into the jeans and sweater territory, but it might also be nice to have the collar come peeking out of a sweater in the fall. So stay tuned for that. But overall, even though it's not red, <laughs> I do like it. Cotton collared shirt from Le Prix. And I purchased this one because it's got, although it is, um, you know, it's not vintage. It's got a vintage silhouette and then it's got a little tie here. And I've worn this in a few different ways to make my outfits feel more vintage. So I've really enjoyed styling this one so far. Sometimes I will roll the sleeve, sometimes not, but I wanted this as just a staple basic white because as you may notice I have a lot of color in my wardrobe and there are times where I do need to balance it out just a little bit and this is the ultimate 70s polyester duo. I got this again from the same clothing market that I got the uh, Lizzie McGuire shirt from and this is from Silver Birch Vintage. I don't know if I mentioned that when I talked about that shirt but this set, so the blazer and the vest, were both five dollars. So I have styled this vest with the blazer. I've also styled it without. Uh, you can see sort of a 1920s-esque Carmen Sandiego look I was going for here, but I think it's just a really interesting peach color and it brings a lot of brightness, I think, to the winter. So I wear this in the winter a lot with other uh, moderately neutral colors and I think it looks quite good. I really liked this set because you could wear it together or you could wear it apart but it's just got really interesting details. So I don't know if you can see these buttons but the buttons are what drew me to it. Next up dresses and skirts. Number one is this beautiful red circle skirt from White Tiger Vintage. I love vintage because sometimes if you're lucky Items come with the original tags and I was able to get the original tags for this, I think 50s or 60s uh, ever pleat skirt and the pattern I was just drawn to right away. I don't have enough red in my wardrobe and that's why I wanted it. I've paired this with uh, vintage style sunglasses and shoes and a shirt and I really, really like it and it's nice and full. So I think I will be trying to wear this into September if I can. This beautiful, sparkly 60s A-line skirt. Now I bought this for a panel discussion that I was gonna be a panelist for way back in, I think February. And this is also from Auburn Vintage and it's a set. It's got these really beautiful little buttons, which are what drew me to it initially. But I just thought it would be interesting to do a two-piece set instead of a dress or a pair of pants or something, just to see what I could do with it. And I think what I could do as well is wear these pieces as separate. So I could wear this with a nice pair of jeans going into the fall, or I could wear this with some tights and heels, sort of like what I wore to the panel. And um, yeah, I think this shirt is still a little bit boxy and a little big, so I think I still need to get it taken in just a little bit. But once I do, I think this is a perfect versatile pair. This. <laughs> I was drawn to this skirt because A, it's a circle skirt and I like those, but it's got a cat on it. And I thought having a poodle skirt that was actually a cat skirt was just dumb and funny. So I bought this pretty much without hesitation. I think it was only 30 or $40 from Auburn Vintage. I like that it wraps all the way around with just a tie. So it's very comfortable, but it's also not see-through. 
and I've paired this with tank tops. I've also paired it with t-shirts, but it's just a really good basic. For me, it's a basic <laughs> and I really, I really like styling it, but I haven't really done it enough. So please keep me accountable to wear this a little bit more. This one <laughs> that you might see me already wearing is a really weird and cool parrot dress from I think the 80s or 90s and Flora and the Wolf was very kind uh, to give this to me. So I really like this one because it's got structure in the front so no bra needed which is awesome and it's got a two-tiered skirt which I think is just really funky and fun and it's actually quite breathable for the summertime. Now this is another Flora and the Wolf number. It's again another fit flit and <laughs> fit and flare. There are very, very, very small white dots all over it, and I just think it's beautiful. And another from Flora and the Wolf is this sort of t-shirt, almost t-shirt style, very long floral 50s dress. I consider it my sort of secret garden dress. I don't know why, but I've paired it with a really cute wicker hat and um, some shoes and I just really like it. I think the blue looks really nice with some red lipstick also. I got this wide, wide shoulder, cold shoulder, big shoulder, off the shoulder. Oh my God. Dress very recently from Think Twice. It's got these really nice flowy sleeves and I just thought the colors in this are truly wild. I love that it's got so many colors in it that I can pull out for accessories. So you'll see here, nice yellow hat. It's also a mini dress, which is very good for the summer because it's hot. Next, this gorgeous blue gingham number from the 1950s from White Tiger Vintage. It's likely handmade. It's got a side zipper and it's very, very cool. I wore this last summer actually on my birthday and we were in Paris, Ontario. <laughs> oh my God, I wish Paris, France. I was waiting outside of a store for my family and it was just a very hot day. So I was sort of standing there trying not to move and a woman walked up beside me on the sidewalk and she went, oh, and I was like, and she said, oh, I thought you were a mannequin. And I just thought, is that a compliment? Here's the picture, you can tell me. Next is this beautiful blue brocade, sort of 50s, 60s dress. Now Flora and the Wolf is always looking out for me. So she saw this at Value Village and asked if I wanted to have her pick it up for me. And because of these gorgeous details and the pleating, I said, hell yeah. Even got the original armpit pads in it. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, from the turn of the century to about the 50s or the 60s-ish, they had these armpit pads in dresses so that you can kind of like get all your, uh, stank in them. <laughs> and then all you need to do is take the pads out, wash those instead of washing or dry cleaning the entire dress. Now, and all you would do is just sew or button them back in. Brilliant. This one has the originals. I'm starting to wonder though, like, is that, is that gross? Next is this orangey striped beautiful number from Auburn Vintage. It doesn't look like much when you just hold it up, but it's got a beautiful ruched cinched waist that looks really good on. And I bought this because I don't have a lot of orange, if at all, in my wardrobe. And I thought also around Halloween, it could be something cool. The person who this was made for was a little bit more, um, um, booby than me. I usually pair it with some beige mules and just a nice wicker purse. Next, this beautiful Grecian 60s robin's egg blue dress from white tiger vintage now this was 40 dollars, and i just think it's great it's got a full skirt i was drawn to it because of the full skirt but also the color it looks really good with reds and pinks 
I wore this to a wedding last summer and paired it with a pair of sort of corally wedges and it looked really cool. So I really, really enjoy wearing this because it's also super, super comfortable. Next, this gorgeous 1940s vintage dress from Auburn. And I loved this one because of the gorgeous clasp detail here, the keyhole neck. It's got the original belt too. And I wasn't crazy about the pattern when I first saw it, but the fit is perfect. Rachel at Auburn buys collections a lot of the time. And the person who these dresses were made for is like my body double. Everything fits perfectly. Like, look at this neck hole. Look at this neck hole. It's got a clasp. Like, it fits my neck perfectly. And I just think, you know, it's great shopping vintage when you know they have collections because you know that almost everything in that collection is probably going to fit you. It's really wonderful for your wardrobe, really dangerous for your wallet. But I bought this to wear with vintage, other vintage inspired items. And with my hair sort of shorter like this, I really love wearing this because it does um, sort of make me feel like a ghost. My goal in life wearing vintage sometimes is to make people do a double take and to think that they just saw a ghost walking down the street. Is that weird? Fellow vintage people, do you do this? <laughs> Let me know. This gorgeous purple wide necked party dress from the 60s. This is from a department store in Toronto from the early 60s and it's got these beautiful beaded pieces on the bodice and I just love it. It's got a low back and a silk skirt with some crinoline underneath. So this is from Auburn as well. And when this came into the store, it was actually a mushroomy gray brown and Rachel dyed it purple. And what a change. I wore this to a another wedding, oh my God, last summer. And it's it was a great mix of purples. So I wore this dress, I had a 1940s, sort of evening bag, which was the same color, and I had a pair of new shoes, which were also the same color. So the great thing about vintage is that you can mix eras as well. And that's what I really, really loved about this dress. I love you so much. So that's my haul of pieces, vintage or secondhand or thrifted that I've accumulated in the last year and a half or so. The point of this haul wasn't to just say like, look how much clothing I bought in the last year. It's more about look, how easy it is to change your buying habits. I used to shop basically exclusively fast fashion until I really educated myself and stores and members of my local community were very helpful with their knowledge and really helped change my perspective and help me learn about the really, really terrible environmental and human impacts of fast fashion. I'm not perfect. I, I by no means am trying to say that, you know, I have made the change forever and I'm, I'm good now and I've saved the environment. No, what I'm really trying to say is that you can find really cool, quirky and fun and affordable vintage and secondhand pieces like I have, and you can style them in really interesting ways. And why not find a piece that's completely one of a kind that only you have? When we're talking about fashion, we need to change the conversation. Please like and subscribe. I'm new, but more videos like this every week. And if you didn't like this video, um, I don't know, just subscribe anyway. Maybe, maybe it'll be different next time. My neighbors have decided to mold their lawn. Good timing, thanks. One time for show and tell in senior kindergarten, I brought this library book that had, it was a giant library book and it had a giant photo of a dinosaur in front of a burning forest. And I thought that was just like the coolest thing in the world. Hmm, I'm sure there's something there I should probably think about.